My name is Eugenia Weston. I am the founder and creative director of Senna Cosmetics in Los Angeles, California. And I am really, really, really excited for this class today because I feel that it is a subject that is really overlooked and we all age. The right makeup makes a difference and it restores the confidence in a woman. And the aging process is, is brutal, but with the right makeup, the right techniques, the right products and the right placement, you can take 10 to 20 years off a of face. And so what I'm going to do today is I break everything down. I'm gonna break down the face, what happens in the aging process, the eyes, the lip area, the neck area, and I'm gonna go into it in depth. And I, I really feel that um, nobody has really, really taught that in depth. And I always break it down so that you really, you really understand what happens psychologically in the aging process and physically in the aging process. Because as young makeup artists, what I have found is that when they have a more mature woman in the chair, they end up feeling very challenged. What do I do? Because they can't relate to it. You can't, you know, you can't relate when you're young because your aging process hasn't set in yet. And it's really easy to make up a beautiful young face. But as a woman ages, you're going to have to do more corrective makeup. So I'm going to be teaching you major corrective makeup today, and that's what's really essential and vital to doing a mature makeup. So I'm really also excited to have my friend of 40 years plus, Cookie, to be my model. We have our five makeup studios in Los Angeles, and you know I started my makeup line in 1976. So I go way back, and then I started doing makeup in 1970 with Bobby Joy, who taught me how to do eyebrows. So um, anyway, I have the same clients that have come to me for the last 44 years of my business, right? Yeah. So we've aged together. We've aged. So the aging process, I know it so well. It's like for the back of my, I mean, I can do it in my sleep, right? And of course, I've worked with Bette Midler for over 40 years. Tony Basil, Leslie Ann Warren, and these are all women that we started very young and then they age and the aging process has taken me to create techniques that really work and make a woman feel that she's not invisible, that she's alive again, that she's noticed. And it really does depend also on your style of makeup. Today, I'm gonna to do a basic makeup so I can break down all the, um, details of how you derive at creating your uh, or making your decisions for it. And um, so let's begin. First off, what I did with Cookie, and we didn't really have to, but I wanted to, how many of you use the Mark Trainer lips? They are really essential if, let's say you're doing a red carpet on a mature woman and she wants a little, you know, a little lift. It really helps. I mean, a lot of the actresses I do, they all want to, you know, use the lifts because once it's photographed, it's set in time. So I love using the Mark Trainer lifts. And of course, they're uh, available at Alcone. And I want to just show you what I did. I put the lifts. You make a pin curl at the top of the head. I mean, I there's all instructions. I didn't want to really put it on in person because it's too hard where I'm in this little corner. But the lifts just give a little bit of a lift and it just really helped this little bit here that we have going on. That is my worst spot. Yeah, the this, worst spot. this, and this yeah. particularly. My sleeping side. Yeah, the sleeping yeah. side. And when you're, when you're with a more mature woman, it's really important to ask the questions, you know, how do you feel about yourself? Why did you, why did you come in for a lesson if you're doing a lesson or if you're doing an event, you know, how, what makes you feel good about yourself? What features do you like? What features don't you like about your face? And then you go from there, you get, you get your information so that you can make your decisions. So of course, as we age, our skin changes. We're gonna start with the face, the skin changes. I'm gonna point out some things that happen. Pre skin prepping and skin care is 
the utmost vital. And of course, now with COVID and everybody being at home, it seems that everybody is taking more time and more effort to really get into skincare because wearing makeup under masks doesn't really help us much. Of course, we want great brows and eye makeup if we go out. But other than that, you know, we are getting maskne and it, you know, the, it's affecting this lower part of the face. So skincare has really taken off. So it's very essential, but for mature skin, it's major. Because as we get older, skin dries. Also in that manner, you lose volume in the face. So the first step, very important, is to use a cream cleanser. Our cream cleanser from Senna Cosmetics has chamomile and aloe, and it is really, really gentle on the skin. It has the, the soothing agents in it, and it just dissolves makeup. You want to use two-step cleansing always, because you want to adhere all the toxins and dirt with the cream cleanser with a cotton pad or a, actually, I like gauze pads. I like the three by three gauze pads. And when you use that with the cream cleanser, you just squirt it on onto the gauze pad and you go over your whole face and neck with the cleanser. And the gauze is pure cotton, but it's gentle and it helps to exfoliate as well. And we'll get into exfoliation too. So I suggest a cream cleanser, not a liquid cleanser because it's too drying for the mature skin. So then next with your double cleansing, you wanna wash. I actually love this. This is the best cleanser on the market. It is exfoliating cleanser. It has your alpha hydroxy, your glycolic acid and your lactic acid and jojoba beads. What is so amazing about this product is that it is gentle and it's for all skins. I mean, I recommend this product for teenagers all up to mature women and men because it is very balanced. It is a gentle uh, as multi-acid wash, but the jojoba beads in it dissolve in the washing process and they moisturize and balance the skin so it isn't harsh. And that is really important when you are cleaning a mature skin or an acneic skin or any kind of eruptions. Works really, really well. And exfoliation is so important because of the fact that as you age, everything slows down. And as your, your um, cell regeneration slows down, what happens is that you get accumulation of dead cells on the surface and it makes your skin look lackluster and dull. When you're young, it's exfoliating constantly, constantly. You're getting new cells at such a fast rate. As you get older, everything slows down. So you want to always exfoliate. You wanna start with one time a week this is our brightening polish. This is a physical exfoliator. Let me get it up there. Oh. Anyway, it's a brightening polish and it has salicylic and minerals and it has niacinamide and that brightens the skin. And it has diatomaceous earth. It doesn't have like, you know, those walnut shells or anything harsh. It's very gentle. And diatomaceous earth helps to physically slough off those dead cells. And it's also good for the environment. It, when it goes into the, the ocean or whatever, it, it dissolves because it's diatomaceous earth. It's a mineral fossil. So it totally dissolves. So it's natural. The reason you must exfoliate and get rid of those dead skin cells is because when you apply your moisturizer, what will happen is that it won't penetrate and do its effectiveness in the skin if you have all those dead skin cells on the surface. We are going to tone the skin with our soothing toner, the first step. This is an amazing toner. It has fennel and royal jelly. Royal jelly is super soothing and fennel is stimulating to the skin in a very gentle way. And it um, 
it has no alcohol in it. You don't want to use any products on a more mature skin with alcohol in it. So uh, right now we're going to take a cotton pad with the salus, uh, with the soothing toner, excuse me, soothing toner. And this, these containers are great because you just pump it. You just pump it like in a doctor's office and you get a perfect dose. So this is very gentle. We are going to go over her face in upward motions with the soothing toner. And because it has spinel, it smells like licorice. Mm. Always on the neck. You always want to do this when you're starting a makeup. Make sure the skin is super clean. You can use it around the eyes because it doesn't contain any alcohol. Just get all those oils away. You want to start with a skin that you know your products are on. You don't want somebody to come and say, I already have moisturizer. I already have my eye cream. You want to use your products that you know are effective that will work because you, you use certain makeup products and you don't know how their moisturizers and their skincare is going to react to your makeup. So next, you want to prep the lips with a lip balm. This is our Butter Up Lip Balm. This has avocado, it has shea butter, and olive oil. And this is applied, plus it, plus I'm using new products. That's what I want to tell you this, because usually I would take this off with the spatula for a client, but these are all new products that I'm using in my models today, and I'm giving them all the products when they leave. So that's why I'm using them right from the containers, which I would not do if I was doing, you know, a a shoot or whatever. So the reason you want to put your lip balm on first is that it will penetrate. So by the time you get to the lip application, the lips will be plumped as much as they can be, and they will be hydrated. So that is really important. So we added that. Next, we are going to moisturize. I'm going to be using our sea algae cream. This is a cream with CoQ10, hyaluronic acid, and um, rose hips, which is a form of vitamin C that's very, very strong. Very strong form of vitamin C. It's very lightweight, but it works under makeup. I love using our number 39 synthetic brush to apply moisturizer. This is super hydrating. The hyaluronic acid in this product plumps the skin. And that is what's really important as the skin matures, plumping, so that all the little fine lines will, you know, really look softer. And that's important. And it's an effective, effective anti-aging product. So we're going in upward motions, upward motions. <laughs> The next product that is so essential is a sculpting eye cream. You need a great eye cream. This has, I don't know why, oh, there we go. It's got apple stem cell and grape seed and the smell, lavender. Good, yeah. It smells so good. It has the essential oil of lavender. Love our Rondo series because they're all synthetic and they're soft and they're just beveled on the end so that in, they go, they just glide on. So look up at the ceiling. We're going to use eye cream. It's very important to use eye cream because you want to plump up the area because when you apply concealer, it's going to look too dry. Look down, and I also use it on the top as well. This particular eye cream is made to work synergistically with the concealer. And that is really important when you're using eye cream because some eye creams are so heavy that your concealer will really crease and it will just glide off of your face. Look up. This is super, super, super lightweight, but so effective. Apple stem cell, look down, is such an advanced ingredient. And there are clinical studies that it actually increases collagen by 357% there are on this particular product, this apple stem cell. I am going to just really press it in. Next product that is 
you need a good you need a good primer. You absolutely have to have a good primer, but all primers are not created equal. This is our moisture gel primer, our moisture drop gel primer. This is an herb pore complex. It has thyme, so it tightens. It has rosemary, it has marjoram. So those are your tighteners, but it also has argon oil, which is the mother of all oils. Argon oil is so emollient and so nourishing and so conditioning to the skin. And it has water drop technology. So when you put it on, the water bursts and it hydrates the skin. So it fills in pores, blurs pores, makes the skin look really smooth, but it isn't drying. It doesn't have a lot of silicone in it. It is a gel. Let me show you. It really tightens and refines the pores. If you can see, you see that gel? It is beautiful for dry skin, for a mature skin. Moisture drop primer. It makes such a difference to the skin because when you're young, your skin has luminosity. It has vibrancy. As we age, the, the cell pigments, you lose the cell pigments. And those cell pigments is what gives the color to the skin. And what happens is your skin fades as you get older. So you want to bring vibrance, hydration, and plumping to the skin. For Cookie today, I'm going to be using our Lasting Illusion makeup. This is a satin matte finish makeup. It is made in Milan, Italy. It looks like a second skin. I, I mean, a lot of you don't know me, but I am so into skin. Skin has to look real to me. I use a magnifying glass to make sure. So when I put the foundation on and the concealer and all the makeup, I look at the end and if there's any specks, any creases, anything, you can see it in the magnifying glass. And if you are doing photo shoots, you should look at your work in a magnifying glass because if, if you have any little things that have, that go, especially with HD, it's gonna show. So this will help you to perfect your work. As I said, if it looks good in a magnifying glass, it's gonna look spectacular yeah. in real life, right? All right. So I'm gonna be taking the golden beige. Now, when I am, <laughs> matching. You want to match the neck because she's wearing sunscreen all the time. Her neck is a little bit deeper than her face. Plus, if you go too light, you can't go anywhere with highlights. Then it should look like ghostly. It's too light. So I'm going to be using color to match the neck and you can, you're you going to see that it really, it blends in and it matches the neck. You see that? I always look, I always match the neck. I match to here and I match to the forehead. All right, so the next step is I'm going to dot it in the center of the face. I always start in the center and brush outward. Again, I'm using my 39 foundation brush. You can get into every little nook and cranny Go out to the side. Make sure you get any skin that's close to the hairline. Yeah, I'm bringing a little bit of warmth to her skin because I don't want her to look too light, but it matches the neck. Now let's see one side too. Let's see that side and then it gives a skin-like finish to the complexion. I also always put look up foundation under the eye because it does get rid of a certain amount of darkness. And as you can see, look down, Cookie. Do you see she's got a lot of darkness under her eyes? And this happens because as we age, we lose volume. The face starts to sag and the eyes recede back. 
So when you're doing a mature makeup, you want to using more highlighting techniques. You want to lighten the face. You never want to contour too much. What I end up doing is I count the shadows on the face. Because if you add more contour, you're adding more shadows. You want to take away shadows on the face. Very important because adding more shadows makes you look older. The only places usually that I contour a mature face is if the forehead is too large and out of proportion with the rest of the face, I will contour in that area. And also we will contour, we contour with a double chin. That is the only places, usually the cheekbones, unless they're very smooth. I mean, Cookie has great cheekbones. We could maybe contour her a little, but most women as the face falls and creates more jowls and more nasal labials, you don't wanna add more shadow because it just adds to it and it doesn't look attractive. It's better to take away. Cookie has, of course, very deep under eye circles under the eye. So we're on the eyes right now. Because as we age, our eyes recede. They recede in and this part becomes very loose. This is high, this is a high plane and it, and it creates a shadow, more of a shadow because the frontal bone is protruding. So it casts a shadow and then as the icing sinks in. So you want to bring this whole area out. You want to bring the lid out, everything. We're going to pull it all out. As I said before, you want to highlight everything. You want to bring everything out. Light brings out, dark recedes and defines, color rounds out an area. So for Cookie, because she has the blue under eye circles and everybody does, usually under eye circles are blue. And, and there's redness too, because as we age, the skin gets very thin around the eye area. And since it's the thinnest part of the eye anyway, it even shows through more capillaries and all that. I have to say, my eyes have shrunk so much yes. since I was they young. Because they fall back in, they, yeah, do, they shrink. They, they shrink. become nothing. Yes, and when you're young, your eyes are big and wide and they're out front. Well, we'll get to that when we get to the eye makeup because that's really something. And I'm glad you said that because it's true. They, yeah. they get smaller and they sink in. Under eye circles are usually blue because the veins show through and dark and shadowy. You never want to use yellow unless it's red, reddish. You always want to use peach tone. I know your makeup artist, you know they have to use peach. You want to use that under the eyes. Of course, you know that, right? It's opposite to blue on the color wheel. So you want to neutralize with the peach concealer. This is hers. So I'm going to use it right on her eye because I'm gifting her this, no. right? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So tilt your head down. And where this darkness comes out, we're going to just dot in the concealer and in the inner corner. You've got to put it in the inner corner because as the eye sinks in, what happens? Do you see how shadowy that inner corner is? And I'm using our totally transforming concealer. It is full coverage, but it also has an ingredient called Centipeda Cunninghammy, which is an herb, a bush from Australia, and it firms the eye area. So again, I'm using products that help to um, for, you know, make the face look younger. Now look down, I'm taking my Rondo brush. I'm using the 45 for this because it's very small and it's so gentle. And we're going to blend I'm just in that arc. We're just blending it in that arc and in the inner corner of the eye. Blending it up a little bit under the eye because she's a little dark there. So the peach concealer really helps to neutralize. And the other thing is that when you do eye makeup, and I'll get to that, a lot of times you can only do so much. You know, you're not a miracle worker, almost. Really? <laughs> almost a miracle worker, right? You are. Almost a miracle worker. But what I'll, I'll, the trick that I have is 
It's called the theory of contrast. And when we get to the eyes, I will explain that. All right, so now lift up. Now, do you see how that wipe, wow. you know, yeah. it, it, it minimized it. It minimized those under eye. Look at the difference between the two. Yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So we pull it out as much as we can without looking cakey and heavy. Because we, we look in the, when I look in my magnifier, I've got to see that it looks really natural. Like it's just her, you know, it's her. It's not cakey and heavy. And that's one thing that none of us like. All right, so let's do side number two. Again, tilt down. You always, you can tilt down and you can absolutely see right where you need to paint out those shadows. Because if you go into this high plane here, it's going to defeat your purpose because you're bringing this out again. And we don't want this out. We want to bring this valley to the mountain. This is your little valley. And Barb, we don't like our valley. We want, the va we want to climb up to the mountain. <laughs> so our little valley here. So you've got to be very strategic. That's why your brushes are really important in that area. A lot of people just take the concealer and wipe it all over. It's got to be very strategic. And I just, I don't know how many of you do film, but when you do film, unless you're doing some kind of special effect, if you're doing beauty makeup, it has to be strategic like this. You have to paint every little thing out so it looks real. It can't look heavy, cakey, because when that, of course, now it, when we get back to the theaters, it's, you know, the, the face is 50 feet. Huge. Huge. And you can't detect makeup. You can't. Lift up. And I pat it in place. I never wipe it down. You've got to keep it exactly where you have applied it. And because she has these little needle marks, and they are gray blue. I'm just dabbing the peach concealer, and then you just spot oh, yeah. it. One right there. Okay, but you see, we got rid of those on the forehead, and I'm going to actually use the second <clears throat> concealer. This one is warm, a uh, neutral medium. That was warm medium with the peach. This is neutral medium, and this is what I'm going to be using in the nasal labials. Again, I am taking my Rondo 45 brush. Again, it's the same concept. Valley to the mountain. Valley, mountain. Okay, so look at, right? We want it to be more flat looking. So if I were to put concealer or highlight here, it's gonna defeat the purpose. So again, you have to be, it has to be placed very strategic taking my rondo and putting it right down that edge into the nose because it's very deep there as well. Feather it down, a little feather up, but never up here. That's why you just, you know, some clients, they just put the concealer and do with their fingers it won't give you that result. And again, the lips drag down. The lip, and you can see on this side, she's got more on this side than on this side. So the lip drags down as well. So you want to lift that up. Look at the difference. I mean, it is a, a difference. And then I can take my sponge. And you can just dab. Remember, you don't blend it away because you'll take it off. You always just want to dab. Now for that area, I'm changing my brush. You all have to have this brush. This is my Flatliner 43. It is a blade. So this is what I'm going to do my detail work with here. Right in here. You got to get right into these little lines here so that we lift them out. Again, it's same. There's a valley, but it's a little baby itsy valley. <laughs> so
So we need to use a little brush because if I put it all over again, the high point, it's gonna defeat the purpose. So I'm going to paint out these little areas. And I mean, it's a great brush too, if you want it like, this is a little too peach. So I'm gonna take that neutral color and put it over it so that it helps to make it look more of a natural color. Yeah. And then she's got some little, you know, imperfections on the nose area. So you can just take your concealer and you can just paint all that away. And you see? And then here, if you need to, you lighten this part up too. See this little shadow here? You lighten that up because this, this happens too. As the face falls, you always get a little jowl, yeah. goes up in a little jowl. So you wanna, you can highlight this area and then you can do a little bit of shading. And then I'm gonna just lighten that up in there. Just try to, I'm, I'm making a smooth, even canvas. Now we do have to set, but we don't wanna set the whole face. And powder is an issue, definitely an issue. You don't wanna bake a, a 50 to 70 year old skin. You don't wanna bake it. I mean, unless you're like, like a newborn or maybe three, you can bake, but you can't, I, I don't think you can bake after that, <laughs> right? Because it's just too heavy, too heavy. So I created a talc-free powder because a lot of the powders have talc. And talc is what is a mineral that is a heavy mineral. And what that does is it shows. So I created Secret Set and it happens to be my most favorite product. I love Secret Set. It is an invisible mineral powder. It also is formulated with a peptide and gold. It is amazing, it's completely invisible. And as I said, I made it specifically to set concealer around the eye area so it's undetectable. It's it comes in number one for light to tan skin and then number two for tan to deepest skin. I love, love this product, love, love, love. So I'm gonna be taking a, my, my, another favorite brush, which is my Baby face is a synthetic brush, but it is dome tipped so it can fit under the eye area easily. Before you set, you must always blend because the, as she talked and did her expressions, there's creases. So you want to always blend those creases out and set. Just press, 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 press. Plus, if you need to go back in, I'll just show you. If you have to go back in because you said, oh, I, you know, this is looking a little dark still, you can go back in right over it and you can touch up. And it actually is compatible with the powder so that so that it doesn't look cakey. I love this brush, the flat liner. It's such a great brush. It's right into that, those little areas so you can do your detail work. All right. So now next is we are going to do the blush. I'm using cream to powder blush. Cream to powder is a, again, it's a, a pigment suspended in cream, in a cream silicone base. So I really love this for um, a mature skin. I love it for everybody's skin. So where you blush, you don't go below the nose, you don't go past the pupil, and you don't go up into the highlight area. So that's really essential. This is you, this is tender rose. It's a beautiful color. It just looks really natural. 
which is really pretty. I don't like to put blush in the back of the face. I call that old lady blush. Because <laughs> I don't, it's like you, you don't have color in the back of your face as a rule. You know, this is where the glands are. This is where color usually lies. So you just want to go back, you just want to blend back. You don't want the color to be in the back of the face. Gives her a really pretty soft glow. Because we're bringing back the youth, bringing back the color into the skin. Yes, bring it back, bring it back. So that's cheeky blush. So I'm not powdering the whole face until at the end, but if you know if you need a little areas, just give a little powder, but not a lot of powder on the face, just in those areas that catch the shine. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the eyes. This is our real essential part here. First thing I always do is curl the eyelashes. Got to curl the eyelashes. Very important because as we age, we lose our eyelashes and the eyelid changes position. So it's, it's lifted up and you can see that skin underneath, which I feel is quite unattractive. So what we do is curl because even though Cookie doesn't have super long lashes, it still is gonna give dimension and lift because they're going down and you wouldn't see them at all. And it just doesn't make, it makes the eye look vapid. Okay, look down, always have them look down, leave the eye open, place the curler at the base. Do I have any skin? No. And squeeze. I curl everybody's eyelashes. I don't let anybody curl their own eyelashes. I like to do it myself because I have a specific way I like. I like them at the base because if you curl too far out, they're gonna have a dent. It's gonna have a dent. So you curl at the base and they look the longest that way as well. So you have always have the client look away from what you're doing. Do I have any skin? No. You always ask first before you press hard. Leave it on for about 10 seconds. And it gives her a little lift and I will, she will be able to have a show of lashes, definitely. Another step that's really important for the eye to make it come to life and look big is eyeshadow primer. I'm using number two eyeshadow primer. And this is really, really essential because as we age and even young people, we have veins and capillaries that are exposed in the eye. And to make the eye look bigger and your eyeshadow to stay true to color, you want to have a very, very smooth, clear base. And I know that you're gonna see the difference here. Look at the difference. Wow. You see how that brings out her eyelid? Remember, we're bringing everything out because the eye has recessed back. Look at the, the look at how wow. ready, already how big her eye looks. Yeah, big difference, right? So this is totally transforming eyeshadow primer. Comes in shade one and two. I'm using number two. It also has anti-aging ingredients in it. It's a tacky cream. I call it my shadow magnet, so that the eyeshadows adhere to it, so they stay on really, really well. Look up. I'm going to put a little below because I am going to be using some powder for liner underneath as well. That's it. Totally transforming eyeshadow primer. So that made a big difference to the eye area. Then you put a little, just a little swipe of the Secret Set powder, just a little bit, just to set it just slightly. Again, the eye is always moving, so there is creasing that happens. So I created a palette of really neutral colors. And I will tell you in my experience, everybody likes neutral colors. Neutral, neutral, the nude look, neutral colors, right? And they look good, but this is a basic makeup. I mean, I myself, I wear neutrals, but I like a very, well, I show you, I like extreme eye makeup, right, on me. It's just, 
the way I do my eyes. So you have to really get to know your client and see what their style is. Mm -hmm. But on Kuki, I'm doing a basic. I know she just likes a very natural, soft look and wants her eyes to look bigger. She told me that. So I listened and I said, okay, I have to use my tricks to make her eyes look bigger. So I'm taking buttercream with my flat oval shadow brush 32 that I love. It's natural hair. And I'm pressing this light color because remember light brings out. So we're gonna bring out the lid even more. Gonna bring it out. So we're just putting it on the whole lid from the lash base up. This is my best seller. Buttercream is my top seller in my line. It's been like that for probably, got 30 years already. I had this color. Everybody loves buttercream because it's the most beautiful matte shade. Mattes versus metallics on a mature skin, right? If you want to use metallics, you've got to maybe do one little spot in the middle. You can't use metallics on the whole lid because just look at it this way. Metallics are like a mirror and you've got this, this mirror and it's reflecting. So it's what's reflecting all the wrinkles. So you want it to be very matte. The next step is to give her some depth. So I'm taking this camel color, very natural and soft sand, and I'm going right into the crease and above the crease and extending it. You don't want to ever put dark shadow in the inner corner. You always want to go three quarters of the way because we, you'll defeat your purpose. We already highlighted this. If you go like this, it's too far in and it connects to the shadow. And then it, your eyelid looks hollow again. So we're going to extend it out. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, so we're going to go three, halfway or three quarters. We're going to just sculpt out. We're sculpting out a shape. In a soft way, and we're extending it to make her eye look bigger, to appear larger. Push back. Again, we're pushing back that skin to make the eye look bigger. Now, look at how much bigger her eyelid looks already. I love this mini feather brush because it is tapered synthetic. It's number 19. I'm going back in word to the outer from the outer corner just a little bit so that we have a fuller bigger eye look i like having the products and palettes so that you can just really paint away then you want to take the larger feather brush the feather 15 and use this for blending I know all of us know about this type of a brush. It's a great blender. But we're gonna really get that eyelid big. And you can take a deep color. This is espresso. If you wanna even make it more defined and get right into that little crease area here. This is espresso. Open your eye. Okay, so now we have a parameter there and I'm taking next my favorite brush, the flat liner. And I am taking espresso powdered liner. I find that my customers now tilt down cut like powdered liner because it really sets and it looks softer. Look up. I'm going to line under the eye. And I know there's a myth, you know, you shouldn't line under your eyes because it pulls down the eye. You can look at the bone structure and you'll be able to see if it pulls down, you might have to go in closer to the rim because to make the eye look bigger, you really have to line the eye. There's just no two ways about it. You have to line the eye. You have to create a new 
parameter for creating that definition that we lose when we're younger, right? Then I also take it and we use it on the top. The function of liner is to look like you have thicker eyelashes. You see how I'm manipulating the eyelid? I never have them just be free like that. I have to take control so that if they blink on their own, it's going to mess up my makeup. And it feels good when you have a oh, good steadying mm -hmm. hand on there mm -hmm. or finger anyway. Yeah. The next step is Ultra Last Liner. This is a non transferable eyeliner. I waterline everybody's eye. And as you get older, what happens is your eyelid changes direction and it it actually goes, you can see more skin. Cookie isn't too bad, but there's a lot of customers or clients, actresses, whoever, that this lid, you can see the skin because as you lose the lashes, that inner skin shows. But look at the intensity that I've created with the liner and underneath, the tight lining. And what I, was, what I was gonna talk to you about, about contrast, the darker the eye, the less the dark circle looks because now the eye is darker than the circle, the under eye shadow. So now the shadow by an optical illusion looks lighter because the eye is darker. Yeah. So it's, it's theory of contrast. I want to show you just without adding the liners on this other side, what, ha what it looks like, look down. When you just use a tight line, what it does to the lashes and the look of the eye. Okay, look. You see what that does? It defines, you can see the effect of it, but you can't see it. So I'm using the espresso and underneath the eye. Just go along. Yeah, you always wanna take control of the lid. Don't be afraid to just go in there and hold and just press so that it doesn't move because if it moves, then you're going to have to touch up and then touch up takes time. So you want to be complete control of your human <laughs> so that you can. <laughs> no, but it, it makes the human feel secure. Yeah, I it's, think I think yeah. it, it gains trust it's, and confidence it, it in your stabilizes. In, your, in your artist, yeah. right? Yep. It gives, yeah. And have a very light touch, of course, with any makeup that you're doing. Love using the sponge. Look up. This line should follow up. Line should follow up. Let's see what's in the mirror. So now her eyes look a lot bigger, I think, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got my eyes back. You got your eyes back. <laughs> and then, of course, we will apply mascara. We're using our Voluptulash. Of course, I would normally use a um, disposable, but since this is her mascara she's taking home. I'm using it right from the tube. Back and forth to get the tips. And I like to put my finger there too because it gets on my hand, my finger, so that it doesn't get on her skin. I use it as my backdrop. So now you can see that she has a few lashes coming out there. And of course, if you're doing an event, you would of course put a few little individuals, little short, she would use short individuals. And 
And of course, if you get any mascara on, you just take your Q-tip if you need, and it just comes right off. Very easy. Make sure we don't have anything on our hands. Let's go back and forth. Get in those inner corners, trying to get every lash. And you can read her movements, like I was going a little fast, so I saw that she, her eye looked away, so I have to slow down. I see that she might have felt a little uncomfortable at a spot. You have to really read, you know, your client's movements. Look at how much bigger your eyes look. They're amazing. I'm amazed at my, I'm amazed. Oh, it's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, I love it. Look up. Now I'm using our mini baby lash definer, lash detail mascara that has the baby, baby brush. Because also as a woman gets older, the, since the lashes are smaller, a big brush really can blob underneath. So this little baby brush gets all these little tiny, tiny lashes without transferring or smudging on the bottom. So you just can paint away without any risk of that because a big brush is way too large for the under eye. So we use a small baby brush. That's why it's important to use liner under the eye because the lashes get so thinned out that you need some type of definition. So that's why it's really important to Use mascara on the lower lashes. Look up and liner. It doesn't pull the eye down. I'm also going to add a little bit of a shadow that is a, it's a little sparkly, but it's a different kind of sparkle. It's not metallic. It's hard to see on the monitor, but it's a matte with a reflex pigment. Reflex pigment is a very fine pigment. And if you want to use sparkle, what it does is it diffuses any wrinkles. It's just a little tiny bit of sparkle. It's hardly even detectable, but it really works to diffuse any kind of wrinkles. It's called, that one's called sand glass. It's a beautiful, beautiful beige color that you can put over as a topper over the eyeshadows. The eyebrows. Make sure that you take off any if there's makeup on your eyebrows and always brush them up because you want to lift, 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 lift. We're going to use today our powder brow pencil. This is a great, great pencil because it goes on like a powder, but it's in a pencil form. We want to start the brow where the eye begins approximately and you wanna just create little baby hairs. You don't wanna go across really drastically. The arch, the high point is at the outer end of the iris, the colored part of the eye. And the end is where the nose and the eye intersect. And it's always important to give your pencil a good sharp so that you can make those little hairs. So we're going to just make little sketchy strokes, come round, change the direction. This is medium brown. I chose a warm color for her brows so that it looks very soft. And it goes better with her hair color because her hair color has warmth to it. If I were to match the hairs on her brows, they're almost, they're a, a blackish taupe color, they're more ashy, then her brows would go with her hair color. So I'm going a shade lighter. You can see that the front is very faded here, so we added some more defined definition, and then you always blend. You never leave it because then it looks too harsh. Always apply and blend so it looks soft 
and you incorporate the powder or your brow color in with the skin and your brow hairs to the other side. Again, start where the eye begins. Come across up to the high point above the iris, the colored part of the eye, and then swipe down to end where the nose and the eye intersect. But what happens as a woman ages? She has brows that are falling out. Usually the ends, they get very thin and sparse. So we have to bring that definition back because when we're young, we have very, very full brows. So you want to make your brows fuller so that you look younger. And it really opens up the eye and you don't wanna go down, you wanna more go outward so it opens up this whole area. So it looks really beautiful and it enhances the cheekbones. If you don't get your brows tinted, let's say, it's really good to use a tinted brow fix because it covers up any of those grays because we get grays in our eyebrows as we get older and they fade. So our uh, brow fix gel has conditioners in it so it helps the growth of the brow and it strengthens them and it has little brow extension fibers and those fibers adhere to your brow hairs and it makes your hair look fuller. So then we're going to brush up and it defines, you're gonna see the difference with this brow to the other. Look at that. It separates each hair and they stay in place until you take them off. And see, see the definition that it gives? And it coats all those little white hairs that we get so that your brow hairs look healthy, young, and defined. And if you want to add that little bit of warmth, I suggest a beautiful matte bronzer. This is a neutral color, it's called Baja Bronzer. And I'm using it with my 33 powder point brush. This is gorgeous, luxurious. But if you just want a little warmth, you just put a little bit around the face, just as a frame, just a little bit on the cheek, a little warmth, just pretty and bring it down. You want the center of the face to be lighter because you want the features to step out. This is called your triangle of beauty, your triangle of light. And that's because these features need to pop out and the, the darkness is around the edge. How much time do I have? Okay, I forgot to highlight my eyebrows. Oh my God, can't forget to highlight the eyebrows. Okay, <laughs> gotta take my Light Tricks pencil. <laughs> it has hyaluronic, sodium hyaluronic. And you wanna highlight the brow shape. All right, we gotta do that. We gotta, we have to lift more. Forgot to lift. I'm taking my 40, 48 brush, my baby brush, my Rondo and blend that. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, that looks better. We have to highlight those eyebrows. This is a fabulous pencil. It just glides on. It has a glow end and it also has a matte end. I'm using the matte end on Cookie today. I'm gonna blend that. So last but not least, we're gonna do the lips. Yes. So we want to blot off all the lip balm and it's already penetrated. So her lips are very smooth. But if I leave that lip balm on, then my lip liner is going to just glide all over the place and not stay. Because as we get older, we lose our lipstick. We lose pigment in our lips as well. And we have to bring it back and we wanna bring back a shape. Cookie happens to have a great shape. A lot of lips get thinner and they recess in. So you want to create a fuller lip look. But on Cookie, I'm going to use cherry, uh, which one, yeah, cherry berry, our favorite, right? Yes. This is an ultra last, this is an eight hour wear pencil. Once it's on, it stays. I'm going to line the points up with this little cleft. Everybody's cleft is one that might be more defined than the other, but the cleft is where the peak is of the lip. 
Well, you put a little dot there, just, and there's the little, yeah, there we go. And then that's where the bow is there. We can put a dot under, one on each side. This is just a little template so that you can connect the dots and have an easy time shaping the lip because I have found in my career that the lips are probably one of the hardest things to do. So, okay, so now we're gonna connect the dots. We're gonna make our V in the middle and then we're gonna go down. Connect there, close your lips. I like to have them closed so that I can really see and you don't want to come too far out because again, it will drag. You want to cut it in close. You want to cut it close so that it lifts. It gives more of a lift. I'll put a little more concealer there. Okay. <laughs> I don't see? feel like you're going into the corner at all. Yeah. yeah, we're not going, we want to round it and go, yeah, I'm not coming all the way out to the edge where your lip is because it will drag it down. Mm -hmm. And we want to not, it, we don't want to connect to this and right. so we have to cut it. So we cut in, we cut in. So here, as you can see, we cut in and come down. That will make the lip look fuller. Okay, I gotta make sure I'm even here, looking straight ahead. And then the top, gonna come down and meet our little dot there. Let me see, am I even? And you want the top lip to be fuller than the bottom lip or them to be equal. Because if the bottom lip is fuller, look in the mirror, I mean, it'll drag, it'll drag down. So you want the bottom lip to be equal or smaller than the top lip so that it looks like you're pouty because that's how a baby's lip is. Also fill in the edges so that they're darker and it creates more light in the middle because more light in the middle is gonna give a fuller poutier look. Now I will take my retractable lip brush. I think it's uneven, so I have to fix it. Mm -hmm. And this is great because you can take it with you. You can blob lipstick on the end if you're on a set. Put it in your set bag. You will not have any lipstick getting all over your kit. I'm gonna be blending this now. Close. I like the lips tight when I'm doing a client. I like them closed. And everybody wants to open their lips. I feel that they're tighter when they're closed and I'm able to really draw it on better because as we get older, it get, they get slack. And we're gonna come up a little bit. She has a like a wide void in the middle there. So we're gonna bring it up to make her lips look fuller. Then, Lipstick is very important, so I'm using a lip luster. This is filled with all kinds of lip conditioners. Shea butter, jojoba, um, it's so conditioning to the lips. It has avocado, it has vitamin E. It is amazing yes, and that really we, we need that conditioning. And I can just put it on from this tube or I can use my lip brush. And also it's very important to use a color that is a little bit contrasty because as we age, our teeth yellow. Cookie happens to have great white teeth, but a lot of women have, and men, they have yellowed teeth. So you wanna use something that is contrasting because if it's too light or too neutral and not very dark, it can make the, the uh, teeth look yellow and dingy. Voila! What do you think, guys? I hope I helped you out with a lot of tricks and tips that will help you get through the challenges of aging. Yeah.